let's just do it. Let's leave this world that you and I dwell in in terms of bass fishing and go to a place that might as well be another planet. A place where a big bass, a giant, not just a once in a limit, once in twice a day sort of thing. It can happen four or five times in a limit. It better happen if you remember the Bassmaster Elite Series coming to Lake Gunnersville. I'm Tommy Sanders. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studio here with Mark Zona and this echelon of the top, say, five lakes, the, the uh, Toledo Bends, the Rayburns, the Ontarios, and others. This may be the best. 300 days a year at tournament as it just kicks it It's out. the jewel of professional bass fishing. And here's the reason why. It's really on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the uh, three-and-a-half-pound bass, well, it means something throughout the year except for when you go to Lake Gunnersville. It doesn't mean a whole lot. And the other side of it is, this is a different Gunnersville this time around. Very challenging. There's fish in a foot of water. There's fish out to 20 feet of water. But as much as it's different, it's still the same Lake Gunnersville. We're gonna take a look at our Yamaha Unlock the Lake bridges. Any time we go to Gunnersville, this time around, bridges are gonna play a factor, and they have this entire week. And so many of these famous spots we're seeing right here, known as community holes, other places you might want to avoid community holes at Gunnersville, you want to be on the community hole. Well, uh, look, these bridges get pounded. You remember all the way back yeah. in 2010, Ski Breeze winning that event here. There's a reason why these bridges get pounded this time of year. Really, it's this right here. There's current constantly funneling through these bridges. There's bait, and the schools of bass follow them. This time of year, before that grass grows real high, bridges are their number one area. Here we go, this being Gunnersville. As you can imagine, the big one started coming right off the bat. Hold it high, get loud, ladies and gentlemen. Boom, shakalaka, ch -ch 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 giant bass for Rick Clun. Well, little, let me put a little trivia on top of that fish there. I've caught a lot of five and six pounders in this lake and a few uh, sevens, but the biggest bass I ever caught in this lake until that one, I caught in 1976, the second day of the Bassmaster Classic, and it weighed 715. So that's my bet. There you go. We'll keep it rolling. The biggest fish weighed in the Elite Series all season long. Rick Lund flashing back to his first classic victory. His number would be tied by this man, James Eagle. Look at that hydrella gorilla. How about that tie? Two big ones. Eight pounds and eight ounces for Elam and Lund here at Gonnersville. But the big bag of day number one, definitely the big bag of the tournament. Mike Iconelli, 28-2. And on day number two, Iconelli would start right where he left off. Rain showers coming in, but that would not stop Iconelli. He said he's had to jump around a lot with technique so far in this event. And one thing about Iconelli, he is on the right ones. No, no, God. It's giant. It's like eight pounder. Huh. Ah! I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. DT6. In your face! In his face! Nothing better than that at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now over to Kelly Jordan. Sight fished all in day one, 26 pounds and one ounce. He's locked in on a big one here. Only problem is right now the clouds, the rain, that will hurt this technique. That is a sub submarine. It's right there, bite it. Your head's standing on it. Baby, woo! Did I say that the rain and the clouds would hurt? For the most part, okay, sorry. except in that case, Kelly Jordan started that day two pounds behind this man, Mike Iconelli, and here on Gunnersville, of course, that is nothing. Iconelli back to work on day number two. God. Get that out of there. Oh, God, it's cramping. It's cramping. Oh, my leg's cramping. I got him. I got them.
Ah, yeah. Well, Mike Iaconelli in Seabold Creek, and welcome to the pain cave. Boy, agony, elation, all at the same time. That's Gunnersville, I guess. How about Carl Jokinson, our rookie here, all the way from Australia, making a splash at Gunnersville. I could have never dreamt of this in my wildest dreams. It's uh, it's unbelievable, really. I just had a magical day. That's uh, life is just an unbelievable thing. The ups and downs of fishing is crazy, and today is one day I'll 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 never ever forget. Carl Jockinson on cloud nine, a huge day, 26-10. Another huge day, too, for David Walker of Tennessee, who notched his only Elite Series win, just one lockdown at Lake Wheeler. You know you're on a dynamic lake when every one of your leaders is doing something different, and Iconelli feels like he is in the right place. I feel like the general area of the lake I'm in is the winning area. You know, this is Gunnersville, so magic can happen. It happened two days in a row. Hopefully it happened two more. All of that and two, yes, only two days down here at Lake Goddersville. What is going to happen in the final two days is anyone's guess. A different flavor to this fifth visit to Lake Goddersville by the Bassmaster Elite Series and more to come. The Diet Mountain Dew Bassmaster Elite on Lake Goddersville is brought to you by GoPro. Hummingbird. Mercury. And by Men Coda. Whether it's your first time fishing or your 50th time fishing, you know how to make fishing excuses, and that's what we decided to ask our pros this week for six seconds. It's too cold, the water's muddy, it's windy, uh, I can't catch them. I spun out. Uh, I ran into Ish on my best spot. Um, I went to another spot and Aaron was there. I had to leave. Biffle looked at me and said, get out of there. Um, I don't know what to throw, and I'm going to get stumped on this. I don't know. Go. No baits. Go. I got the runs, broke my line. Uh, no toilet paper in the boat, and ate a banana or had a banana in the boat. I'm concerned because I feel you may have irritable bowel syndrome, but other than that, good excuses. That's all I can come with right now because I think I get to run. Two words, common goal. You expect it every time when six seconds pops up. Right now we got eight hours to deal with, eight hours of fishing on a pivotal day in the tournament. Woo, what a feeling, man. What a feeling. Day three. Lake Guntersville, leading the tournament by four pounds. I'm in an area with Giants, and I gotta catch Giants today. We're gonna do it today, it's gonna be fun. Well, this is a word you don't hear very often with your leader, Iconelli fishing in Seabold Creek, about seven miles from our takeoff. Iconelli said he's had to relocate his school every single day, and not only that, he's had to figure out a new way to catch them, and obviously today, much different conditions. It's a big one. Three pounder. Let's go by the start today. Nelly seeing what he needs to see early on day number three. And how about Byron Velvet crashing into the top five with 26-6? Day number two, he's going to work out there, and we can just imagine what he's doing. Good one. Woo! 
Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> he was on the big side. Whenever you have a it's tournament where giant are. swim baits are yes, going to play, yes, Byron yes. Velvet will be a major factor. And just around the corner from Byron Velvet in the Goose Pond area is David Walker. And Walker is actually one of our anglers that's having to go through a lot of fish, catching a lot of males. But he said, you weave through those males, and all of a sudden, one of these giant Gunnersville females will show up. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Look at that. Oh, I got a lizard in my leg. There we go. Yeah. Look at that one, Bubba. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest one yet. And that's what Walker said is happening the entire week for him out on Lake Gunnersville. You'll pull the trigger on 10 to 15 bass, and then all of a sudden, that shows up in your life. 5-5 on day two. If he can do that on day three, he might just be the man in charge, David Walker. I don't know if you're aware of this, but you need to be. Days three and four, we've been bringing you live coverage from each one of these events. Now we're going for days two, three, and four. Bassmaster Live brought to you by Lowrance. Four hours of coverage live from the lake each one of those three days at this tournament. It is an experience. Check it out on Bassmaster.com. Diet Mountain Dew Bassmaster Elite Series at Lake Gunnersville. The fifth time the series has come here. Let's take a look at Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year stats. We're halfway through event number two of this eight event season. There he is, John Cruz. Top of the list right there, but still a tight grouping. Greg Vincent, Dean Rojas, and the rest. John Cruz, one of the anglers who are showing their support for autism awareness during this special week. That's a special jersey dedicated to that. A lot of guys flying the flags on their boats in support of that as well. Mike Iconelli comes into day number three with a five-pound lead, which again means nothing here. No, Gunnersville. that's a fragile lead, and Iconelli said it. He's on a fragile technique, and so far on day number three, Iconelli... Not taking a lot of shots, not setting a hook a lot. Needs to put some in the live well now. Big one. Oh my God, big one. Oh, it's a giant. Oh God, it's a giant. Oh God. God. Oh, no, 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 get off the camera. Oh, yeah. I got that sucker. What's different about today is you gotta fish the moment. I hadn't Carolina rigged all week. Two keepers today on the Carolina rig. Look at that pig. Whew. You gotta keep note in mind. Every day's different. High pressure. Whew. Wind out of the north today. Look at that thing. Five pounder. One he needed to be sure. We go from Mike Iconelli to this guy. What a story, this rookie with the Bassmaster Elite Series. First ever from Australia, living the dream is Carl Jock. Exactly, and actually well, he was the number one ranked angler in Australia for almost a decade. Well, check out where he's fishing in this event. Fishing the same exact bridge where we saw Randy Howell win the 2014 Classic. And that bridge has been throttled for the last 12 months. Carl Jockins is learning something a little different, dead sticking a jig. Yeah. There you go, Australia. Big one, big one. Oh yeah, here we go. Stay on, stay on, giant. Stay on. Oh, oh, oh. Stay on. Stay on. Yes. Woo. Wasn't pretty, but I got it done. <laughs> He's gotten a lot done. Carl Jockinson has labored hard to make it into the Bassmaster Elite Series. Had a tough first event, but at this one, he is giving it everything. A little Aussie culture to introduce is a way in. And Carl Jockinson could not be more elated. I just had an absolute blast. You guys were there and uh, Bassmaster Live and I knew everyone's watching back in Australia and the biggest thing for me was to make the 50 cut and now I'm up there near the uh, maybe the 12 cut which is just amazing. 23 pounds, 10 ounces, a brand new leader in Jason Christie. 
and fin freaks of nature like that are the reason that David Walker is going to be fishing on Championship Sunday. 25 pounds and an ounce. Skeet Reese with 67 pounds, a six ounces. 16 pounds, seven ounces with 69 pounds, eight ounces. Mike Iconelli once again moves into the driver's seat here on Lake Gunnersville. Iconelli trying to do something that's very, very hard to do anywhere, much less Gunnersville, and that's win one of these things wire to wire. 28 pounds, 24, down to 16.7 on the third day. And you could tell after the day three weigh-in, Mike Iconelli very worried about his pattern and technique and some of the best big bass hunters right behind him. All right, he will take that lead into the final day at Gunnersville. We'll have that for you when we come back. I'm still in the lead, but I'm quite frankly, let it slip away if I don't regroup. I'm more, literally, I think I caught eight or nine keepers today, maybe 10. I'm fishing hard just to get a few good bites up. We haven't seen, as far as I know, a giant bag yet. You know, that over 30, and that could happen on the last day. I can't come in with 20 pounds tomorrow. Morning. I know that. It's gonna be whoever can jack a big sack tomorrow. Somebody's gonna get 25 to 33 pounds, and they're gonna win it on the last day, and they're probably gonna win it in the last hour. I hope early, I can get some momentum. You need momentum. You need signs of the fish, or you just you're just kind of lost. You know. The Diet Mountain Dew Bass Master Elite on Lake Gunnersville is brought to you by Nitro, Skeeter Boats, Trike Boats. by Yamaha. Be sure to send in your catch to Bassmaster.com slash catch or hashtag Big Catch Contest. Now you've probably got a photo like that that you love. We would love to see it. Hashtag Big Catch Contest. Bassmaster Elite Series Diet Mountain Dew Bassmaster Elite event on Lake Gunnersville. We have made it to the final day. And look at that. You couldn't ask for a better setup. The top six anglers within five pounds, which is basically even going into this final day, and Iconelli on top. Exactly, and some of the best big bass hitters in the Bassmaster Elite Series. And here's what's been really strange about Lake Gunnersville. You know, when it's pre-spawn and post-spawn here, there are giant schools of largemouth. I'm talking, you catch 100 to 200 a day. That is not the case this time around. A lot of our anglers in the top 12 have had to relearn, relocate their schools. Skeet Reese having to dial in again. I mean, I know what I want to do today. I'm going to do what I've been doing for three days to get to this point. I'm going to throw a swim bait. Um, try and, you know, all fish in the water I've been catching them in. Probably fish some new stuff and uh, see what happens. And that right there is probably the most telling statement. You see your leaders, Iconelli and Ski Reese, kind of where they don't have that confident vibe that they're going to go out and just jam on them all day long. And the other dynamic is really where they're fishing on Gunnersville. It's a creek called Seabold and probably more pressure on this creek than anywhere else on Gunnersville. Well, Tommy Sanders, they're going to start within 200 yards of each other this morning. Yeah, with all that in mind, remember what we heard Jason Christie say at the end of day three. Somebody's going to catch between 25 and 35 pounds today to win this thing. This will be fun to watch. They're fishing close to each other, but they're fishing much different. See, Ski Reese, he's been living with a swim bait this entire tournament, and the size swim bait he's throwing, a seven inch hollow body swim bait, when he gets a bite, it's always a good one. You got first and second place starting within 100 yards of each other. The anticipation. It looks like I'm fishing slow and calm, but I'm like wound up tired than a clock in the inside. Just... Come on, old guys. I guess they're not big enough to eat it. That one is. One, there's a fish in the boat. Chubby little one. And that right there is the scary thing about Skeet Reese and the way he fishes. He will throw that big swim bait all day long and only fish for, well, five to seven bites, but they will be the right quality. 
That one right there he might want to cull his way out of by the time this day is over. But Skeet Reese with the first salvo on day number four. Mike Iaconelli again not too far away. The champion here in 2006. First time the Elite Series came here, made some critical moves on the final day to preserve a victory. Who knows what he's going to have to go through to win here at Gunnersville today. I'm in the right area to win. Way to start the tournament right there. Come on, get that get that heart rate going. Pump it up. Big day for the 06 champ here at Gunnersville. So many good stories working here today. The only Australian ever to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series rolls out a championship Sunday with the love of a country on his shoulders. Carl Jacobson. Day four of Bassmaster Elite Series. This is unbelievable. I am on a level you would not believe. Huge shout out to all the Australian support watching back home, Bassmaster Live, I'm doing this for you. Let's go and do it. Just behind our takeoff at Spring Creek, Carl Jacobson, there you go. Fishing right within 20 yards where Randy Howell won the 2014 Classic. Carl Jacobson fishing painfully slow with his jig, literally counting the rocks. Yes! That'll start the day off. Are you kidding? That bite was so subtle. I was picking it up and picking it up. Just, just got it. They're just not feeding this morning. This has been four days of pressure. Locals hitting it. And uh, I've just got to slow right down. That bite was so subtle, it was incredible. So four pounder, start the day off. Probably the most pressured bass in the United States right there. And you heard him, I have to slow down. Slow's definitely been his word, and you were right. You said it earlier. Every day since the 2014 Classic, that bridge has been fished hard. David Walker, just up the lake, about mid-lake there, and had a fantastic three days here. It starts just two pounds and some change behind Mike Iaconelli. Of course, he's won on the Tennessee River before, won big time in 2011 on Lake Wheeler. I won my last yeah. tournament on Wheeler Lake. On Tennessee River in Alabama. No, we're a little yes. bit later than this, but I tell you what, this, this Tennessee River has yes. always treated me this good. God, leave this a good one, boys. Yeah. <laughs> that one's pushing four right there. Walker looks like he's offshore, but you heard his power poles go down, fishing very shallow spawning flats. From there, over to Mike Iaconelli, who's starting to bounce around a little more on this final day. This, I just cannot figure out what they're doing in here for the life of me. It's not enough bites, you know? A whole bunch of came coming in and going the first two days, and then all of a sudden it's like they stop moving. They stop sliding. They either set up shop somewhere or they're already out of here. I don't know. It's hard to believe that there's not any left moving through here. Well, that's the positive and negative of Seabold Creek. It has the right caliber, but they have a lot of room to move. First look at Jason Christie out here. What a career he's had with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Started with the Classic in 2013. Won that year at Bull Shoals. Added another victory last year. No reason to think he can't do it again this year. Hard enough to catch one, much less you got a big mosquito on top of your head. Grass is aggravating. Can't get a good cast in. That's a good opportunity. Grass just didn't look like a good cast. So you got the flying mosquitoes, 
Now you got the grass. And the grass wouldn't let me make a good cast. So opportunity one missed. I got a tag fish. See how much money we made today. We made. Well, I can't tell. 150 bucks. We made 150 bucks. Making money every second of the day. Absolutely, that's what he's all about. Jason Christie with that fish. Moves up into third place. Look at that, our leader, Mike Iconelli, down into fourth. Things are happening on Gunnersville. We're gonna make two more small moves, and then you just, you gotta, get, you gotta keep it up. You know, you can't die on your history. So we're gonna make a big move, and we're just gonna go fishing. You gotta try to do that trip. It's the Diet Mountain Dew Bass Master Elite Event, Gunnersville, Alabama, and four hour Diet Mountain Dew Fish Stories. They were hearing from a local favorite who made a strong run. Not quite enough, though, to get to this final day. Dave, I went out today and I, I, I knew I had to catch at least 26 or 28 pounds to have a chance to get back in the top 12. And I did what everybody does at Gunnersville. I went out and tied on swim baits that had enough rubber in them to put mud tires on a jacked up Bigfoot truck. I had tied crankbaits on that had bills on them that looked like hubcaps. That's right, at 11 o'clock, I've got me one three-pounder. I said, boy, you are really working over Lake Gunnersville right here. You have got this under control. And I told my marshal, I said, I've had enough, dude. I'm going to have fun. If I'm going to get beat, I'm going to at least laugh about it. I put everything up, picked the swim jig up, went to the bank. I said, if I ain't going to catch him, I'm going to at least watch my bait come back in. I caught a five and a half, and in 15 minutes, I was culling, and then we dumped the clutch on them. We went to working on their heads all day. I said, we losing, but we having a lot of fun. Gerald Swindle bringing the good stuff for his hometown, home state crowd, I should say, Alabama boy who had a good tournament here, didn't make it to this final day, though Skeet Reese certainly did, and he's making a move right now. Started out in Seabowl Creek, got a limit, but not really the size he wanted to deal with. Just a solid stringer right now, but it's not the weight that he's going to need to win this tournament. But if that, I guess if there was a tournament between he and Iconelli right now in Seabowl Creek, he definitely won it this morning. That. Caught a lot of three-pound fish. And you can kind of tell that every day he's had to relocate him. But the areas that Skeet's in compared to Iconelli, it seems like the fish are coming to him. Skeet going to make a little move here across the river to Town Creek looking for big ones. Get out here in this outside grass line. Trying to move out now without any wind. Um, I'm going to stay on the outside of the edge of this grass for now and just slow roll this swim bait out here. I just kind of go over the grass, just see what happens. I know I need to catch a couple big ones if I'm gonna have a shot to win this thing. But, jeez. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Stay down, stay down. Just keep coming. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the bites we need right there. Woo! Gosh, it's almost like he knocked him out on the hook set. That fish had no idea where he was right there for a second. But look at that bait right there, that Bastrick swim bait. Byron Velvick told him before the tournament to throw it, and he may win the event on it. We heard Skeet say earlier, bemoaning the lack of wind, but it doesn't seem to have hurt him. And that particular fish right there, good one. Puts him in a good position right now. And meanwhile, Michael Iconelli, the last time we saw him, he made a point. He's jumping around a little bit more quickly. Definitely. This first time, in fact, in this entire tournament, Mike Iconelli leaving Seabold Creek. This is like a bad freaking dream, dude. I can't wake up from, you know? It's exactly what it's like. It's like a terrible freaking dream, and I just can't freaking wake up from it, man. Wake up, man. Things definitely starting to perplex Mike Iconelli at this point, the 2006 champion here. How about another rookie with the Bassmaster Elite Series? One of the stars, no doubt, 
of the FLW Series. Brent Erler from out west coming in here and having his first great tournament right here at Lake Gunnersville in 2015. Back out now to David Walker, one of the anglers working in the mid-lake part of Gunnersville. Exactly. He's really been concentrating on Goose Pond all week. And he said, you know what, here's the deal. There's no secrets on Gunnersville. You either win tournaments in Spring Creek, Browns Creek, Seabold, or Goose Pond. You might as well go there and just figure out the schools that are in those creeks. And he said, coming in here, he knew that he was going to have a lot of local pressure. He said, the main thing to do is just outfish the locals. And really, so far in this event, David Walker has done exactly that. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Golly. <laughs> uh, oh, she swallowed that sucker. There's a five pounder. Ah. Uh. David Walker, yes. his numbers production may have gone down from days one and two, but man, the size of that one right there puts him in a great position as well. And Skeet Reese gunning for the top. Derek Remitz won the first time out, his very first tournament with the Bassmaster Elite Series back in 2007, and he's back big time at Gunnerstown. This tournament was about a week later. Derek Remitz would have been a major player from there. Back down to Spring Creek with Carl Jacobson right now, and what he did on these bridges is very impressive, man painfully slow but the other key is as hammered as these fish have become in the last few years on these bridges light line 14 pound line playing with fire but still catching quality big one get in woohoo yeah, how insane is this oh there you go, Australia, number two. Whew, Aussie flag, dream come true. I came to America um, for one tournament in, in 2009. Previous to that, I'd never been to America or overseas, never caught a large amount in my life. I came to America and I fished the US Open, and I came second as a co-angler, just fishing as a team's event, three day, and I drew Fred Rambanis on the final day and I caught tons of fish because it was clear water and it was kind of like back home. That's how I kind of thought it was going to be and I made the decision to pack up and move over here and I, I'd pretty much been here once and fished one tournament and I'd never caught a large mount until 2009. Carl Jockamson didn't just come over here and jump into things. He's worked very, very hard, put in his hours on American waters for the better part of two decades. This guy's been working hard and getting great results. And it's really been a two-pronged approach. What, what Skeet's done every morning is concentrate on the grass beds and sea bolt, and then he'll kind of just mill around and look for isolated laydowns that he said, they're just unobvious, they get ignored, but when I do hit the right one, it will be a key bite. Yes! Woo! <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hope that's a game changer right there. You know what's weird though? He didn't hit it hard. I just kind of, it's almost like it was on a limb. I just kind of pulled. I don't know if I should have swung him like that. <laughs> Things are getting interesting now. How about that stuff on the final hours of the final day at Lake Gunnersville? Does not get any better. Exactly right. It's time for the skeeter boats taste the bait. And, and these lay downs, you know, sometimes Skeet would even say that they were just sticks in the water, but really the base of some of these lay downs. There'd be some two to three pound fish, 
but it was out at the ends of these laydowns where the bigger females would set up. And he said, look, man, they could have been spawning or just transitioning out to deeper water. Some of them would just load up on it, but a lot of those real big ones would absolutely crush it. He didn't get a lot of bites on the wood, but they were definitely bigger. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah! Skeet Reese with an absolutely terrible practice, putting the tournament together each day. Absolutely one of the best swim baiters on earth. Exactly that. There's Skeet Reese with the four pound lead over Velvet Walker and the rest. We're not done yet. We're getting close here at Lake Gunnersville. The last part of the day is coming up. The Diet Mountain Dew Bassmaster Elite on Lake Gunnersville is brought to you by Toyota. Bass Pro Shops. Berkeley. And by Evan Williams Bourbon. This is the Diet Mountain Dew Bassmaster Elite Series event final day. Lake Gunnersville, legendary Lake Gunnersville in Alabama. The man who started with the lead, in fact, he's held it for all three days. It has been today, by his own admission, a nightmare for Iconelli. Man, do you ever feel lost? I'm lost, dude. I've got no idea what to do. I'm totally lost. I go from deep to mid-depth to the bank, and I can't find them. Try changing areas. I am lost, dude. I was so dialed the first couple days. I just can't even bite. I mean, honestly, I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm ready to go to a bridge <laughs> with everybody else. I'm ready to just get on a bridge. If I can't catch them there, then I suck because everybody catches them on bridges. I mean, I cannot buy a bite. I cannot buy a stinking bite anywhere. And we said after the day three weigh-in, Iconelli was very, very shaky on his technique and pattern. And well, so far, it has completely unraveled. To be so in touch with those fish and then to lose them completely is just hard to fathom. One more look now at Carl Jacobson sticking with his plan. You know, working my way up through the Bassmaster Opens, I learned pretty quickly that you are going to have some rough tournaments and you're going to have some good ones and I wasn't going to let those bad ones, you know, knock me down continually because I had to put three together over that year and I think over the last four years fishing the Bassmaster Open really taught me if you get knocked down, the best thing to do is catch like losing a fish, catch one straight away and get back on top. I wasn't going to let the Sabine rule my whole year and judge my whole year and I just, this was the tournament to just make a comeback and do that and I put everything I could into it. Yeah, big one. Yes! Come on, stay on. Stay on, Blair. Stay on, baby. Stay on, baby. Woohoo! That's why it's worth waiting. Oh, it's about the same size as the first one. It's a, uh... Three and three quarter. Look what they're doing to that jig. That was a lot of bank, a lot of time for no bites and finally worked. Carl Jockinson, the rookie, I know you're impressed with his poise and he's doing great work on this final day. The Byron Velvet right now, he's had a monster final day of this tournament. He said, I'm fishing bridges, but I'm fishing differently than the rest of the folks out here. He said the base of the bridge gives so much treasure he would put himself within 200 yards and follow the schools that would kind of ignore the bridge foundation. Look at up there. Possibly the most interesting fish landing of the entire year. And Tommy Sanders, it's only going to be one thing. Oh, yeah. Evan Williams bourbon, shot of the day of the week. Byron Velvet is, is real flying off the rock. And I'm not going to lie, he has given us some incredible fish landings before. This one right now, the top of my list. Oh, absolutely. Gold yet again. Back to a day which has been kind of tarnished for my guy, you know. Oh. No. 
That's how I feel. I want to cry too. <laughs> too embarrassed to cry. I would. <laughs> if you weren't videotaping, I probably would. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, reality check. I suck. The brutal to watch. Br seriously really? brutal. Uh, you know, and he, in his defense, he knew he had to get 20 pounds today or nothing. So that's what he's getting is nothing over to Reese. I am wound up right now. I need to, trying to figure out what the right move is. And well, time to go do something different. Because it's not happening so much. Zip code. Go do something different somewhere else. Go fish some fresh water. Fresh in my head. That's, I mean, there's tons of potential around now still, but. Ski Reef's gonna kind of bail on the Seabold and Town Creek area, make a little bit of run and start fishing water. Well, he has not looked at the entire tournament. Gonna run a few miles down lake to All Reds Island. Ski Reef said, basically every day of this tournament, I've been starting over and practicing. We're really seeing that in the last hour of competition. Yeah! I was thinking about moving. I just happened to see that little stump sticking out there by itself. That helps. Oh, I am shaky. Don't have much time. But that helped at least a half a pound, maybe a pound. Good move and a good result. Timely result for Skeet Reese. Will it be enough to make him a repeat winner, albeit five years later here at Lake Gunnersville? We're about to solve all the mysteries right now. The weigh-in is getting cranked up, and we are ready to go. 24 pounds, 7 ounces! Byron Velvet takes the lead with 88 pounds and an ounce. Get loud, ladies and gentlemen. Carl Jacobson started the day with 64 pounds and 8 ounces. Needs 23.10 to take the lead from Byron Velvet. Five fish, 17 pounds, 7 ounces. Moves into fourth place with 81 pounds, 15 ounces. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a dream come true for this young man. Get loud. Jason Christie's looking for 22 pounds, 11 ounces, 16 pounds, 8 ounces. Not going to take it this week, but with 81 pounds, 15 ounces. Jason Christie moves into fifth place currently. David Walker looking for 20 pounds, 14 ounces. 17 pounds, 4 ounces. David Walker made it all the way through to Championship Sunday. Get loud, ladies and gentlemen. Skeet Reese looking for 20 pounds and 12 ounces. 25 pounds, 5 ounces! Skeet Reese takes the lead with 92 pounds, 11 ounces. Once again, Skeet Reese delivers on Lake Gunnersville. Go Ike for Mike Iaconelli! He needs 23 pounds and 4 ounces here on Championship Sunday. 2 pounds, 15 ounces. Skeet Reese has done it! For the second time on Lake and Gunnersville, Skeet cannot be beat! 2015 at Gunnersville Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Skeet Reese! Hey, I don't care if it was five years ago, that was the last time the Bassmaster Elite Series was here on Lake Gunnersville. That is a repeat championship on a place that's almost mathematically impossible to repeat on. That shows us how good Skeet Reese is. You know, really, if you look at his titles, Bassmaster Classic, Angler of the Year, and it seems like 
every other year Skeet Reese wins an event. I'm going to tell you something. I mean this. He is going to end up at the top of the ball game when he retires. Could be the mo maybe the most underrated, best-known guy in the sport of really? bass fishing. He's tremendous and just a talent that's way out there on another planet. Okay, we're going to another side of the country when we come up. Next time on the Bassmaster Elite Series, we're going to the California Delta, and then for the first time ever to Lake Havasu. What is going to happen out there? Look, I'm going to give you three names right now, and I'm going to start with that guy right there. I'm going to start with Skeet Reese. He knows that water. The other two kind of dark horses right now. Let's go with Brent Ayler. And okay. how about a Justin Lucas? Ayler had a good tournament at Lake Gunnersville. Justin Lucas having a good season. We got a lot more coming up and a completely different look the next time we see you right here on the Bassmaster Elite Series.